Okay, hi guys, welcome back to my third, I guess, piece of tutorial content or third um, tutorial or tutor's notes. Um, why have I written week four? Anyway, um, so this is stimulus perception is um, the third topic that's going to be tested in your upcoming quiz. So your upcoming quiz tests you on three topics, marketing strategy, um, which I've uploaded notes on problem recognition and then now stimulus perception. So these are the only three topics that are going to be tested and I'm going to go over, um, I guess, my content and add some examples to supplement um, what Matthew's uh, lecture would have spoken about and also your textbook. Okay, so um, let's get started. All right, so sensations, um, what are they and why do we talk about sensations? I know that in um, Matthew's content, he goes into very um, deep theoretical meaning about like, you know, how you taste stuff and how your brain interprets sounds and things like that. But basically, um, as a summary, as a summary um, a sensation, when you've experienced a sensation, then you've reacted to a stimuli in some way. Okay, so um, yeah, if you... If you hear sirens outside, um, then and and you jump, that's your sensation, and um, the stimuli was the sirens. Okay, um, in a marketing con context, um, you know the stimuli can be anything. It can be you know music in a shop. It can be an advertisement um, on your phone. It can be a retail assistant coming up to you and talking to you. These are all stimuli, and you'll feel different sensations towards the stimuli. All right, so basically it is what you see, feel, hear, touch and smell um, and, you know, your senses towards particular stimulus. Um, the important thing to note here is usually um, the more profound sensations are, then the more attention we're likely to give to them. So if I start screaming, you are likely to... I don't know, wake up and be like, what's going on? Okay. Um, in the same way, if you walk into a store and there's a very strong scent, um, you know, you'll be, you'll pay more attention. Like, where's that smell coming from? What is that? I like it. I don't. Okay. So usually the, the larger these, these stimuli, um, the more likely it is for you to pay attention. And we do see, um, brands and stores um, put quite a bit of emphasis on these five sensations in the sense that they really try to touch off as many senses as possible in order to get your attention. So, um, you know, stores will pay attention when, particularly if you go into a shop in person, which we haven't done for a while, but if you go into a shop in person, you know, usually there's very curated music on there to be aligned with the store. And so, you know, you'll like the music that's playing and you'll spend a bit longer in there. Um, they'll really pay attention in terms of, you know, for example, how their retail sales assistants look, if they're all wearing the right uniform, how they talk to you, because, hey, that's what you see and hear. And that's going to affect how much attention you pay to them as well. OK, so. Um, yeah, and, and recently stores do have started using scent as well to kind of heighten that other scent sensation as well. Um, an example of that is probably like Peter Alexander. Um, um, I know like Samsung does it as well. They have a, a scent that they have across all their stores. So hopefully, you know, when you step into a Samsung store, you recognize the scent. I don't know how well that works, but they do try to do that. Okay, so moving on, what's the difference between sensation and stimulus perception? Okay, so the sensation is just what you feel, hear, smell, touch, like I just said to you. But stimulus perception is how you perceive that, okay, that sensation. So like I said, to one person, the audio track that's playing in David Jones when you walk in there, one person may perceive that as, hey, great song, love this tune, going to continue shopping. Another person may perceive it as gross. I hate this song. This music's hurting my ears. I'm leaving the store. Okay, so can you see how different people will perceive the same stimulus differently? And this is called perception. Okay, um, very technically, um, perception is this process here that I've got written. So translating the sensory stimulation into info, integrating the information with previous memories, and then creating meaningful patterns of experience. I'll go through that in a bit more depth in the coming slides. Um, but what I also want you to think about is, and I've tried to mention these in our webinars, um, 
But think about how perception can, for example, affect your ability to recognize you have a problem or how perception may, you know, think about how perception can link to other topics in this course because in your final, this is a bit of a tangent, but in your final quiz, you're going to be asked to draw a model of consumer behavior that links all these topics together. So I'm just hinting here, perception probably plays quite a large role in the whole process. Okay, I'll just leave that there and I'll talk about more about that later on. All right, moving on. So perception stimuli, it's this kind of four-stage process. Um, I love these little antonym thingies. Um, I like to remember as E-A-I-I. And um, first we need to go through exposure um, of the stimulus, then pay attention to it, then integrate it, and then interpret the sensations. So I'll go through these step-by-step step in a second. Um the important thing to note is, like I said, what this, what these four things simply explain is why consumer A and consumer B perceive the same stimulus differently. Okay, so like I said, if there's a particular song playing in a department store, consumer A might really love it and consumer B might really hate it. And that's because they have a different perception of the same stimulus, which is the song. Okay, and these four steps, exposure, attention, integration, interpretation, help us explain why they have different perceptions. All right, so basically exposure, um, the... Two main factors that limit exposure are the stimuli available in the environment and whether the exposure is random, okay? So how we perceive something is going to depend on one, did I deliberately go and seek out that particular stimulus? So for example, if I'm looking to buy a new MacBook and I go and specifically look up MacBook ads on YouTube to, I don't know, educate myself on which computer I should buy, I'm deliberately exposing myself to that stimulus. So can you see how I would possibly pay more attention to that? Versus option two there that I've got written random exposure. You know, for example, I don't need a new computer at all. I'm online, I'm trying to watch my series and a goddamn MacBook ad pops up. Okay, and so this is random exposure of the MacBook ad. And in this scenario, I'm probably not going to pay that much attention. I'm probably going to be annoyed that I have to watch it and, and not be able to skip through it. Okay, so how we are exposed to the stimulus is going to lead to a different perception. Okay, okay, step two, attention. How much attention I pay to the stimulus, again, is going to affect how I perceive it. Um, again, this is linked to exposure. But attention or factors that limit attention are because of three things, the perceiver, the stimulus, and the situation that they're in, okay? And this is a major issue for modern marketers, um, you know, particularly in the digital age. We have a major issue with getting consumers to pay attention to what we're saying to them, okay? Because there's so much info everywhere. And I don't know if I've said this in the past, but consumers now multitask. We've got 10 tabs open at once. Um, you know, we're on our phone as well. We're on a computer. We've got a TV playing in, a back, in the background. And as you can see, the amount of t attention that consumers pay, particularly to marketing information, is becoming increasingly low. So the three things that, again, affect this specifically is the consumer themselves, the perceiver. So point number one that I've got there, um, you know, what are their goals? What are their motivation? What's their memory is going to affect how much attention I pay. So to give you an example of that, like I said, if I did currently have the goal of getting a new computer because my current one is so slow, if I see an ad on TV for a new computer, it is highly likely I'm going to pay attention to that because it's in line with my current goal. Okay, so that's how the consumer is going to affect how much attention they pay to a stimulus example an ad in this scenario factor two that's going to affect how much attention i pay is the stimulus itself okay and we constantly see marketers trying to change the intensity the frequency the size the movement of all the stimulus they present to us to try and get our attention so even when companies send you promotional emails um, or you know post an ad through facebook or youtube or instagram um 
they will try to get your attention different ways, whether it be, you know, doing something out of the ordinary, showing to you 10 times rather than one time. They're just trying everything they can to get your attention by manipulating the stimulus, okay? So either designing that ad fancy or including video on it or, you know, just making it fancy. The third thing that's going to affect how much attention you pay to something is the situation that you're in. And like I said, um, you know, the, the situation where you are receiving um, the stimulus. And so in my example where I told you, you know, am I in a scenario where I'm paying full attention because all I'm using is my computer at the moment? Or am I in a scenario where, you know, I'm talking to my friend, I'm holding my phone and I'm also trying to watch an ad? probably not going to be paying that much information. So um, if you see that little photo that I've got there um, of someone, you know, accessing their phone, um, do you think, you know, where you are when you are receiving marketing info um, affects how much attention you're paying to it? Um, quick answer, yes. And this is, I believe, linked to my comprehension question this week. But Absolutely. So, you know, if I'm doing nothing else and I'm just scrolling my phone because I'm trying to waste time, then I'm probably going to watch through most things that are that are shown on it versus, you know, if I am like trying to record this video at the moment and I've also got my phone here and I'm, I've got an ad coming through, I'm not going to pay attention to it. Okay. So it really depends on the situation that I'm in. All right, moving on. Okay. So the last two tip steps. So we've gone through E, A, which is uh, exposure and attention and now I, I. So um, the third thing that happens to consumers after they're exposed and paid attention to is um, integration. So, you know, how do I integrate what information I've just told you with what I already know? And every consumer is going to have a different integration process because let's say I just see a new ad for the new MacBook Pro now. For me personally, I already know that's what I want to buy. And I'm 90% sure that I want to go and buy one of those next year. So when I see a new ad, I simply integrate this with my existing stance and my existing info of I'm already pro Apple. I already know I want a Mac. Now I see another ad. Looks pretty good. Add that to my bank of memory and I've integrated it positively and said, you know what, this is probably going to push me to 95% chance I'm going to buy a new Mac next year example and then finally final step is to interpret um, everything that you've been shown okay so um, you know what is the meaning of all of this and we usually see interpretation um, falling apart in terms of um, when marketers try to use a mass marketing strategy i.e they only try to release one ad for a certain product different consumers are going to interpret it differently, okay? So some, maybe the ad was designed to be funny, but some consumers through their integration process said, hey, that's not funny, that's really offensive. And that's an interpretation error. Can you see there? That's a communication error, really bad for marketers, okay? So yeah, anytime you see like failed marketing campaigns or like, you know, a lot of the times brands spend a lot of money on, I guess, hiring or paying celebrities to endorse their products and it ends up being a failed campaign. And that's usually because through this process, at the end of the day, the consumer interprets it as, hey, I don't see where that celebrity fits in in the process. They actually don't make me want to buy that product at all. I don't think I'm going to go buy it. So they've interpreted, they've misinterpreted, I guess, what the marketer's message was. Okay, so really important to try if we are trying to, figure out how people perceive um, messages and stimuli is to figure out, you know, where along in this four-step process, E-A-I-I, did we fall apart as marketers? So that E-A-I-I thing here. All right, so back to this. Um, so to complicate this all again, or not to complicate it, but to add one other layer, you know, at the end of the day, how we perceive things, it is those four steps, but it's going to boil down to very individual factors. Okay. So my age, what I do for a living, my gender, my culture, my assumptions, my expectations, my friend groups, they're all going to, you know, be the end deciders or of whether I find you know, 
an ad funny versus offensive, okay? Because we all come from different backgrounds and you can see, you know, one person in my little picture there saying broken and the other person interprets that as okay, okay? And that's because we come from very different backgrounds. And this is why marketers use such targeted strategies to try and eliminate these differences, right? So you'll rarely see now one campaign targeted at everyone that really segment the market out you know, into really tiny groups of consumers that all have very similar um, descriptors about themselves so that when I do show a group of them a particular new product or a particular new ad, they do all have the same perception of it and hopefully it's a positive perception, right? All right, so to wrap up, um, you know, why do marketers in industry need to understand how consumers perceived stimulus and I've gone through that I guess it's because we want to limit as marketers the number of mistakes we make right and the mistakes we make as marketers whether we've launched a failed product or launched an offensive ad is because consumers have perceived what we've told them differently okay I as a marketer thought for example I think this tutorial was really really um, informative however if I don't properly know my consumers or you guys, then you may perceive this as totally unhelpful and, and not useful and boring. So you can see why it's so important for the marketer, the communicator and the consumer to be on the same page and understand how you perceive info so that we don't end up with that breakdown. Okay. Like the biggest example, and people always say this one is like the Kylie Jenner for Pepsi, you know, failed marketing bungle. That's an example of how Pepsi and the consumer didn't perceive that marketing campaign as the same thing. That's why it failed. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, okay, so this is like just a little bit of extra info, but, you know, throughout this lecture or throughout this tutorial, I used um, perception um, of like ads, for example, to explain how consumer perception works. But perception can also be used um, in a brand context. So, you know, we often see uh, companies that are building brands or um, trying to upgrade their brands um, using perception. So every action, product, communication, logo, store location, spokesperson, celebrity, social media influencer that a particular brand uses um, usually builds a certain perception of a brand. Okay. So, um, you know, for example, we might see Coca-Cola. They want to perceive themselves as cool, young, hip, refreshing. And therefore, you know, every stimulus they put out to their people and to the consumers, it needs to echo um, those same themes of young, cool, fresh, okay? So that consumers will perceive the brand as whole as those three descripting factors, describing factors, sorry. So um, yeah, this is like a bit of extra info, um, but yeah, perception, not just used for ads, it's used you know, in, in building brands as well. Uh, is it not moving? Is that the end? Sorry. Okay, so um, finally to wrap up, and I'll put this question on Moodle, um, but this week's comprehension question that you need to answer is, why do marketers like to know what you were doing and where you sorry, there's a typo there, and where you see their ads, i.e. were you on your phone in bed versus on your laptop at midday versus were you watching a video on YouTube? Why do they want to know where you are and how you are viewing their ads um, and how, because marketers do really want to know that and they track that through data and they can see where their ads have been viewed. Um, how may this affect the amount of attention you pay to the ad? And then if we do know in certain scenarios that you are paying less versus more attention, how do we address that? Like as a marketer, I don't want to spend millions of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars launching an ad that no one's going to watch because you're simply not paying attention to it. So how do I limit, you know, the effect of negative after effects of not paying attention? So how do I get you to pay more attention? How does knowing where you are um, help me do that? All right. So I'll post that up on Moodle and um, I believe that's it for now. I will see you guys soon.